What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to be testing out the new iUniker Raspberry Pi 3 B Plus Dual Fan Heatsink. Now, in the past they have created one for the Raspberry Pi 3, but it doesn't fit. It's a bit long for the 3 B Plus. As you can see here, there are some extra pins that just won't allow this to work. If you own the older version, you can always cut it down if you'd like to. But what they've done is created a new kit specifically designed for the Raspberry Pi 3B+. In this video, I'm going to be doing some thermal testing using the new 3B Plus dual fan heatsink. It's relatively inexpensive. They're $10 to $12 on Amazon. I'll leave links in the description. One of the main reasons you want a heatsink on your Raspberry Pi is because when it hits a certain temperature, the CPU throttles back. The Raspberry Pi 3B Plus out of the box runs at 1.4 gigahertz, but when it hits 70 degrees Celsius, it underclocks to 1.2, and I've actually seen it go as low as one gigahertz, so you're gonna be losing out on a lot of performance if you don't have a heat sink. I use one so I can keep the highest clock rate on the CPU for as long as possible. So we're gonna go ahead and get this on the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. I've already run the test without the heat sink, I will leave both log files in the description if you want to check them out side by side and I'm also going to create a little chart that I can show you at the end of this video. So inside of the package we get the heatsink itself with the fans already pre-attached. Also has two thermal pads in the packaging. Now one of them is very thin. This is the one I'm going to be using and I'm glad they included this because when this was first released they only included the tissue paper thick pad. The thinner one is definitely what you want to use on the Raspberry Pi 3B+. They also sent us a small heat sink for the Ethernet chip. It'll just go right here. And a little aluminum shim for the RAM on the bottom of the unit. It'll go right on this chip. So it's pretty much an all-in-one cooling system. I really like the look of it, especially when it's all put together. And the fans are relatively quiet. All the instructions are included. Very easy to install. I'm gonna go ahead and do it now. First thing I'll do is install the ethernet heatsink. It's a very small piece of aluminum with a few fins on it. It also has some sticky thermal tape pre-applied to the back. You just wanna peel the blue part off, stick it right on the ethernet chip. And that should stay there fine. Next thing we wanna do is install the big heatsink on the CPU. We need to apply the thin thermal tape to the bottom of the heat sink itself. And if it's got a little bit of grease on it, just wipe it off. I do recommend using a little bit of rubbing alcohol if you have it. All we need to do now is attach the thermal sticky pad to the back of the heat sink itself. I chose to leave the blue side towards the CPU. You might get a different pad in your box, I'm not sure. We're just gonna peel this side off now and attach it to the Raspberry Pi 3B+. So this tape is pretty heavy duty. It's not gonna go anywhere. It'll stay on the CPU. We'll now need to place the copper pad on the bottom chip and we're good to go. So for the test I'm gonna be running, I'm using Raspbian. This is a test I came up with a long time ago. It's gonna max out the CPU completely for 20 minutes. It's gonna create a log file and give me 40 readouts. So every minute, it'll give me the temperature reading two times and log those temperature readings in a file. I mentioned at the beginning, I've already tested it without a heat sink. We're gonna move over there now and test it with the iUniker dual fan heat sink for the Raspberry Pi 3B+. Now, if you're running RetroPie and retro games on one of these, the CPU is not gonna be hit as hard as this test we're using. That's really why I do this. This is the most extreme test you can do. It's gonna max out that CPU as hard as it can. So if you're using one of these with the Raspberry Pi, your temperatures will never reach as high as this test here. It's just not possible. You're not gonna max out the CPU like we will with this test. If you wanna test out your heatsink, whatever you're using, I will leave a link to Dropbox down below. You can download both of these files and run this exact test. You can compare it to the video. What we're gonna do is max the CPU out. In our task manager right in the middle, you'll see we're at 100%. Now I'm gonna start the logging. I'm just gonna run this in a terminal. It's gonna create a log file. This whole test lasts for 20 minutes straight, maxing that CPU out, and I'm gonna get 40 readings inside of a log file that I've created in my Pi directory. I can compare both of these as soon as we're done with this. Here's the log file I created with no heat sink. 
With no heat sink, around three minutes, the pie started to underclock itself, trying to keep itself cool. That's what happens when you hit that threshold. 70 degrees, it'll go down to 1.2 gigahertz, and it'll start going down even further. Like I mentioned in the beginning, I've seen it go as low as one gigahertz. I'm gonna fast forward this. We're logging for 20 minutes with the dual fan heat sink. I think it's gonna do a great job. All right, so we're almost done here. We're on number 20 and there we go, it just finished up. I'm gonna open up both of these log files, but I'm also gonna create a little chart for you guys and I'll upload both of these in the description if you wanna compare them side by side. So the one on the right is with the dual fan heat sink. Looking pretty good. The one on the left with no heat sink at all. So at the very beginning, 49.4 without a heat sink, 44 degrees Celsius with the heat sink. And by the end of the test, we were at 75.2 with no heat sink and 56.4 with the heat sink. No throttling occurred with the dual fan heat sink. With both of these tests, the ambient temperature in my room was 75 degrees. They were placed in the same exact location using the same power supply. And I only had one USB dongle plugged in. So we're as fair as possible here. Obviously, the dual fan heat sink keeps the pie nice and cool. I went ahead and created this rough chart. On the left hand side, no heat sink temperature. On the right hand side, the dual fan heat sink temperatures. Straight out of the box, idle, 49.4 with no heat sink, 44 with the heat sink. By three minutes, with no heat sink, the Pi was already underclocking the CPU to keep it cool. By the end of this extreme test, the Raspberry Pi Zero B Plus with the heat sink only reached 56.4 degrees Celsius. With no heat sink, we're at 75.2. The pie just couldn't cool itself anymore from this stress test. It would have kept raising and raising that CPU temperature until if there's a failsafe built into the pie, it either shut down or burn up. And seriously, that's what would have happened. 18.8 degrees Celsius cooler at the very end of this test with the heat sink. If you want to look at it, like I look at temperature, it was 65.84 degrees Fahrenheit cooler with the dual fan heat sink. Those are actually big numbers when we're talking about ARM CPUs. These are very small processors that don't pull that much power. We were able to keep it 65 degrees cooler using this $12 dual fan heat sink from Amazon. And the best part about this whole thing, with the heat sink, the CPU will not underclock to 1.2 gigahertz. It will stay at its max core frequency, 1.4 gigahertz, or higher if you do an overclock. Final thoughts here, the new iUniker dual fan heatsink for the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus is perfect for keeping the Pi cool. This will prolong the life of the chip or the board itself, and you'll also be able to get a higher overclock out of it without throttling down. There are tons of cooling solutions out there for the Raspberry Pi 3 and the 3B Plus. I think this is a great option. It's $12.96 right now on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. This is definitely going to outperform an eBay heatsink or even one of those small Amazon heatsinks. Most kits that you buy come with a small heatsink without a fan. That will keep it cool a little bit longer than without, but it's still going to throttle after a while. The heat really has nowhere to go. At least with this, we have two fans blowing directly on this aluminum heatsink keeping it very, very cool. And as you can see from the chart itself, it definitely did a great job. 18 degrees Celsius cooler than without a heat sink. I really wanna drive this point home here. The test that I used in this video is an extreme test. If you're running retro games on this unit, there are no emulators that are gonna max out the CPU like we just did with this test. 20 minutes straight, maxed it out 100%, as much as this pie could push out. And this heat sink really worked well. Even if I would have let this test run for 40 minutes or an hour, I don't think it would have throttled. These fans are doing a great job keeping that aluminum cool, which in turn is cooling the CPU. So overall, I really like these little dual fan heat sinks. I did mention that I've used one on my Raspberry Pi 3 for a long time. I've never had trouble with it. And it's actually very quiet. These fans don't spin up very high. They put out just enough air to keep that aluminum cool. If you've been in the market for a cooler for your Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, this is a great option. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, 
And like always, thanks for watching.